bicycle riders. In practical terms, that means you want to excite the whole spectrum and get the magnetization from all components, the uh, phenyl, uh, the aromatic components and the aliphatic components, and rotate those that have different frequencies all into the transverse plane to measure them. You need a bandwidth of your excitation. If it's just on one particular frequency, you do, let's say, only for the methyl groups, but not for the methylenes and the, and the aromatics. So only for the red bicycle rider, but not for the yellow one. So you need, and, and the question is, what, what does the magnetization do? Well, you actually have this off-resonance field, which comes from the different frequencies. The, red, the yellow bicycle rider has a small precession frequency in the rotating frame, so there's a residual magnetic field. That's his magnetic field. That's B off. This is the magnetic field of the yellow bicycle rider, the rotating frame. B1 is the magnetic field that is generated by the transmitter. Now the spins don't know if the, if the magnetic field comes from the off-resonance field, if it comes from the transmitter, where does it come from? The spins take the magnetic field that they see, the sum of all magnetic fields that arrive at the site of the spin. The sum is the vector sum because the off-resonance field is in the z-direction. The excitation <laughs> field is somewhere in the transverse plane, let's say in the y-direction. So the vector sum is this one, we call it the effective field, and the spins rotate around the effective field. Now what happens when your B1 field is very small? You make that arrow very short. Then the effective field points along that direction. You can see there's a critical angle uh, at which you cannot rotate the field, the magnetization, anymore into the transverse plane. If you rotate, if your effective field goes along a 45 degree uh, axis, you need a 180 degree pulse to rotate the spits from the z direction to the y direction. If your, magnet, if your effective field is close to the z direction, you cannot rotate them at all into the transverse plane. But if your effective field is exactly along the y direction, you can beautifully do a 90 degree pulse and roll them through, and rotate them into the xy plane. And what determines which direction the effective field points is the magnitude of the B1 field. That means how strong is your transmitter? How short is your 90 degree pulse? So especially when you're at high fields, you spend a lot of money, you're a rich person, you buy yourself a one gigahertz spectrometer, most people dream of that to do a beautiful spectrum, they need a very powerful transmitter because your frequency range is very large. For carbon-13, 250 dBm for carbon-13 or one gigahertz, you can figure out what frequency range that is. And you will quickly learn that the electronics is very hard to get, so you do a 90 degree pulse, a proper 90 degree pulse for the whole width of the carbon-13 spectrum. So having a high magnetic field makes you proud, but it may cause other, other difficulties. It just shifts the set of difficulties, and you have to deal with frequency selective pulses. Actually, the fact of making B1 short is used in magnetic resonance, resonance imaging to select slices uh, of, a, of, of a three-dimensional object, or even in NMR spectroscopy, to say, I want to only excite the aromatic region and not the aliphatic region in the spectrum. Then I use a weak transmitter. I use a pulse with a small B1 field, and I set my excitation frequency in the proper way that the off resonance field has the right value. And then I can uh, do a selective excitation. So typically, we use the uh, 10 microsecond or. Uh, yes, but that's done for non selective excitation. Then B1 is big enough. Uh, so that you can excite the whole spectral width. But you mean uh, if it goes uh, down to 8 microseconds or 7 microseconds, it would make a difference? Uh, no, then, then you just uh, use more radio frequency pulse, you get a power and you uh, have a larger bandwidth that you excite, in fact larger than you ever need. But if you make it too long, if you go from, from 20 microseconds to 1 millisecond, uh, then you will uh, start having selective excitation. And that gives artifacts of the, the lines at the end, right or left of your spectrum, that will become too small. And then the quantitative analysis, you cannot do it anymore. The integration will give you wrong numbers of the number of spins that you can Okay.
So the next thing now we need to discuss is relaxation. We've discussed uh, how we excite the spins. Uh, we have learned in one of the previous slides that we have a time it takes for the magnetization to build up when we put this, the sample into the magnet until we have uh, longitudinal magnetization. And uh, uh, then we have also seen when we tip over the magnetization and it oscillates and decays at the decay time, we call the transverse relaxation time T2. And I'll discuss there are two relaxation times. One that relates to magnetic field and homogeneity and another one which I didn't explain. Now I need to explain what I haven't. So, we go back to bicycle riders. I like to ride a bicycle. So bicycle. Um, this is, suppose that the, the different magnetization components of, uh, it could be chemical shift or it could be uh, the com uh, uh, different positions of uh, uh, your, your, your solute in, 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 uh, in the sample tube where the magnetic field is slightly different. So each of them points to one of the bicycle riders. Different magnetization components. And then you do the 90 degree pulse, and that means you say, you tell the bicycle riders you start your race around the circle. And the bicycle, the riders go around the circle. Some go faster, because let's say they are the aromatics, you know, they have a higher frequency. Uh, or they sit in a, in, in a part of a sample tube where the magnetic field is slightly higher, so their frequency is higher. And the other fatics are the slow ones. Okay, so they go slow. And then, uh, they, after a while, they spread around the circle and they are completely, the sum magnetization is zero. The vector sum of all the components from the center to the bicycle riders is zero. So it means your NMR signal has disappeared, you don't see it anymore. 